Good morning, this is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital with a review of the weekend trading reports for January 12th, 2013. Uh, we've got a market that is in bullish normal. It's at 63 out of 100 on weekly RSI 14, neutral. Uh, 100 on the 10 day NDX scale puts it in the uh, overbought condition. Percent stretch relative to the 200 day moving average is 6.59 percent or bullish that puts us four and a half percent away from sideways and growing slope of the 50-day moving average has improved to white bullish at 0.44 uh, percent uh, ADX 14 is at 20 it's uh, neutral but just about to become a uh, strong upward trend uh, upward trending uh, ATR percentage has dropped to 1.03 percent still in the normal condition. Uh, the risk index score is uh, 1.14, that's the 30 period moving average of the VIX divided by the 10 period that puts us in risk on owning riskier assets is favored. Uh, the risk Z score, when we then take a look at that number and uh, put some descriptive statistics on it, it's at 1.61 standard deviations above uh, the norm. You can see on the uh, indicator just below um, that's starting to get up into nosebleed area that's as strong as it's been um, in the last uh, six months both of those conditions when it reversed uh, gave some sell-off indicators so we've uh, had a nice move right in through here from when the uh, VIX was extremely uh, positive and has been um, and volatility has been coming out of the market that's been a good upward move no change in the blended monthly rebalancing portfolio still dominated by the globals uh, in ATF2 the risk exposure theoretical is at 100% and the model portfolio is also at 100% new trade of the week example uploaded at YouTube at the link provided uh, just reference the Blended monthly rebalancing portfolios again dominated by the globals in both the 13 and the 26. Uh, market health check you can see we've uh, were able to break through the um, this uh, 146 uh, resistance level and close above there and hold for two days. Um, we're still at about two plus two standard deviations above the 30 day mean, uh, so that's uh, still. Uh, a moment of caution we're in the middle of the uh, regression line channel as you can see which is steeply up you see the slope of the 30 period regression line is, is uh, has reversed and tilted up so it looks like it's holding this uh, this big move uh, off the bottom at 140 it looks like it's holding that so far so we're cautiously optimistic uh, price ribbon looks good has made a new high that's better than the 10 better than the uh, 30 better than the 50 period moving average better than the 200 the entire river and flood plain are now out of the river or out of the uh, out of the red so that's a favorable favorable sign um, we've been overbought for a period of time now on Williams Williams percent our jaws of PPO are still open to the upside we're early in the uh, dragons upward move you can see how that happened last time so uh, this is uh, favorable in every regard it's just got to hold this uh, uh, support above about 145 it looks like next week we'll put that line in there um, so let's see that let's see 145 hold and then things look very good 100% uh, on buy signals based on moving average filters in the ETF2 indexes so that keeps us at 100% invested um, the globals at uh, 60 are better than the US at 46 and inside the US mid caps are better than small caps are better than large caps are better than tech two strongest sectors remain Europe and Asia less Japan the two weakest are US tech and uh, Latin America again anything Europe is has been great all of the other asset classes are suffering uh, mids and smalls in the US are above average all the larges are below average um, everything Asia looks positive with the slight exception of uh, Malaysia and India 
Um, now even Canada has joined uh, the party, as has Brazil. Uh, so everything in Latin America and Western Hemisphere looks positive. Uh, we're starting to see the risk on assets um, doing a little better now. Materials, financials, industrials, uh, energy's lagging a little bit. Energy's the uh, the one area where um, the globals are not better than the U.S. It's a tie here at materials, um, but U.S. energy is starting to pull ahead of global energy. But still, you can see the strength inside um global business sectors. Uh, top 30 ETFs sorted by relative strength, still dominated by the globals. And uh, let's see, in the first place we even see any U.S. Uh, S&P oil and gas equipment and services, the XES. And then the home construction story has been persistently strong. Looking at the Dow 30 through the relative strength lens, uh, Caterpillar and Cisco still dominate inside tech and um, the basic materials. Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, and United Tech round out the top five. Uh, Home Depot still maintaining a nice uh, position near the top. At the bottom, Walmart, Microsoft, uh, United Health, DuPont, and AT&T, the bottom five. Um, Hewlett-Packard has, has moved up in right near the midpoint, and we've seen a nice move in Hewlett-Packard uh, coming from off its bottom when it was the worst uh, symbol in the Dow for like six months, and now it's moved all the way up to just below the 50-yard line. You can see it's at 46 now um, on the uh, strength rating. So it's re And remember, the relative strength is the first one to change here, followed by consistency, followed by uh, quality. So um, this is a sign of a real nice move in Hewlett-Packard off the bottom, sort of a validation of the um, washout template when, when it works. ETF liquidities. You see some of the volatility coming out of the short-term VIX. It's down to 6.52%. We'll shift now to uh, the daily report. Inside the gap stat, 13 times out of 30 days, in the last 30 days, the market has gapped down. Six of those 13 times, it has reversed to close higher with an average follow-through of 0.72. When it has closed lower, it has been a negative follow-through of minus 0.24. So the upward move, the rebound off a of gap low, has been three times as large as failures. So that's, you know market continuing to show signs of strengthening on an intraday basis, especially the gap down and then reverse to close higher. That's the morning hook play. That's been uh, the useful play. Um, you see the time series on the uh, slope of the 30 versus the 10 moving average in, in uh, VIX, and then that converted into standard deviations here on the risk Z. No singles in overreaction or channeling. See the uh, l recent volatility spike is dropping off. That corresponds to the drop in the VIX. Um, ADX starting to inch its way higher with bulls in charge. Five day down signals in the VIX and Coca-Cola. Um, VIX, Treasuries, Agriculture, uh, Cliffs Natural Resources and Natural Gas at better than two to one on the auto framer. Uh, ten day losers, the ten day max pains in the Dow, Microsoft, Alcoa, uh, Bank of America, United Health, and Disney. Uh, very few signals inside the Dow 30 tactical. Uh, quite a few positive frog quality numbers. Uh, IBM looks interesting here with a 4.7 frog. Inside the ETF 30, uh, quite a number of uh, dojis, five day down in the VIX. Um, the VIX having a 16.9 to 1 reward to risk ratio uh, on a test of the 10 day high. That's how badly it's been beaten down. And it had an RSI value 
a, an RSI2 value of 4. And so uh, if you think about uh, the risk Z being at an extreme condition at 1.6 standard deviations, um, then now suddenly uh, being able to play the VIX on a short-term basis, beginning with intraday uh, reversions to the mean now becomes possible, gives us a caution about the uh, strength of the bull in this last week, um, that it's uh, still digesting that, and that is, uh, of course, vulnerable to reversals. See the strength here in, uh, in EFA uh, over the 10, one month, three months, six months. It's uh, had new breakouts in all those time frames, as has Europe. And the Dow 30 has a 10-day uh, and a one-month uh, trading range new high. So all good there, uh, as does XLP with a 10-day index of 103. The slope of the 30-day regression line you see here. Plotted as a time series, that slope, it has crossed over its 10-period moving average and an opening to the upside. That's positive for the long term. You can see we're as good as we've been in the last uh, six months in terms of the slope of that upward move. And uh, we still have room to go. There's another 6% um, on the upside, and still we would still be within um, the six-month uh, range of normal uh, compared to the 200-day moving average. So we've made a nice rebound and recovery. Still room for this to go higher um, in this location. So more to the upside. The 90-day slope regression line uh, it looks like it's bottomed out, found support, getting ready to cross to go higher. That would be that's a very good sign for uh, some potential for this to continue to go higher. Um, you can see we've left the river, we've cleared the previous highs at one, the triple top at 145, and uh, we're above the um, the river channel here, the plus or minus one standard deviation. Um, so the, everything looks favorable. Small caps better than large caps. Gold has continued to suffer, um, although it's holding here at uh, 160, and uh, treasuries. Uh, still lurking around a new support, new resistance level at 120. What used to be resistance at 130 uh, after this last pullback has now come down to find support at 120. Just uh, reference charts, feel free to stop the chart. I like Alcoa's signal to noise ratio of 0.6 and uh, VIX's signal to noise ratio 0.5. What that says is the um, that they these are the ones that are exceptionally directional intraday. So um, you should always be looking at these as potential reliable follow through candidates intraday. The relative move in technology is good, uh, so keep an eye on the tech leaders like Cisco and United Tech. The Dow is lagging, and that is actually a favorable sign uh, for the U.S. market when the risk-on um, instruments are starting to do better than the risk-off, which is the Dow. Uh, the globals are starting to lose steam, as you can see over here. They've gone from plus one standard deviation to minus one compared to the U.S. This could be a resurgence of the U.S. market that we're starting to see right here as it cleared five-year highs in the Dow, uh, and so uh, on an upward move, the uh, there's more money to be made in the U.S. than globals, in my view, at least in the mature globals. I would keep my interest in um, emerging markets in Asia less Japan. They're smaller and still are going to give you some upside volatility, but the shift from Europe um, mature companies to the U.S. could be underway right here. That's everything I want to cover on the weekend report. Keep your powder dry and your wrist measured. This is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital.